When you're little, there's no way you can't love ice cream. As a kid, I was obsessed with them. From the most traditional flavors to those flavors that everyone hated, there wasn't an ice cream I said no to. Needless to say, I knew the times when the ice cream man would come by. I knew the tastes he was bringing, and I always tried to be ahead of everyone in line so that I would get the flavors that I wanted. Everything was going more than perfect, but one day, the ice cream man decided to move. From that day on, I ate a lot less ice cream. Since my parents were always busy, it was very difficult for them to coordinate a time to take me to the ice cream shop. Whether or not it was just a childish whim, in those days, I began to feel much sadder. Everything went on like that until one day, a sound revived me. The distinct sound of an ice cream truck coming into my neighborhood. I grabbed the money I had saved and ran desperately to the ice cream truck, which was parked a few blocks from my house. All the kids started to gather. Everyone started to leave with their ice cream. Desperate, I started pushing my way through the line until I got to the front, and when I got there, the face of the ice cream man terrified me. He was a middle-aged man. His hair was thinning, and physically, he didn't attract much attention. What really scared me was his face. It was as if all his skin was pulled back as if it was sagging. His head looked extremely flattened, and his skin was a strange green as if he had some kind of disease. But of all, what scared me the most was his smile. He had a gentle, kind, loving smile. But combined with his face, it was terrifying. The man kept that smile on all the time as he served another ice cream. I didn't understand how no one else noticed. It was as if behind that smile, he was hiding something. Something extremely dark and diabolical. Hey kid, you still haven't made up your mind? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'd like a mint ice cream, please. Mint ice cream? Yes, I'm sorry if you don't have any. I'll order another one. Oh, no, don't worry. I have mint ice cream. In fact, it's my favorite. I was just surprised that a kid would ask for it. Behind me, a friend of mine got more and more impatient. He was Martin, my childhood neighbor and schoolmate. His little sister had disappeared on a trip to the city with her aunt, so Martin was still very upset. Sir, can you stop talking? I've been waiting a long time. In response to this, the ice cream man didn't answer him, just stared at him for several seconds with a terrifying, almost obsessive look and smile. It was impossible to decipher what the man was thinking at that moment, but I didn't want to know either. After a few seconds of silence and possibly terrifying that poor boy for life, he answered him. Oh, I'm sorry, young man. Of course, I'll take care of you too. Excuse me, I hadn't told you what ice cream I wanted yet. But you sure wanted this one, didn't you? Yes, I'm sorry, sir. Martin grabbed his ice cream and left, not before giving me a sidelong glance and signaling me as if to join him in conversation. After the man also gave me my ice cream, and with a tetric smile, I said goodbye. I left with my friend, who, together with Alan and Jimmy, were waiting for me at the side of the sidewalk. What a weirdo. Am I right? I still have goosebumps. That man was terrifying. Did you see how he looked at you? I think he liked you. Oh, shut up. I saw you there. Are you jealous? Yeah, you have no idea how jealous I was. Hey, this ice cream he gave me. Try it. The one you didn't order? Let me see. Ugh, this is horrible. What the hell is it? I don't know. The label didn't say anything. I think he made it? God, man, he must really dislike you. You don't say. Hey, we were just talking. How about we go check out his truck when he's not around? Why would we do that? Because this guy is really weird. Can't you see he's hiding something? But isn't it dangerous to do this? Nah, we'll go when it's night. I know him. This person lives in front of my house. He has the habit of leaving the van open. It may seem strange, but what my friend was telling me made sense. This is a very safe neighborhood. Everyone leaves everything open, confident that nothing will happen. My friends and I agreed, and that same night, we would execute the plan. Just as Alan had said, the van was unlocked and it didn't even have an alarm on it. 
We started to look around, and there was nothing really remarkable. There was no ice cream. He probably kept them in the coolers. The van was huge, so it was easy to tell that this man was very wealthy. Hey, come on! I think I found something! When we all approached, there was something red on the ground, stuck. We all panicked and looked at each other. Was it blood? Suddenly, a door in the back opened violently, and with a smile, the ice cream man stared at us. We all froze. With a huge grin, he turned around and locked the van. At that moment, he turned his back on us, not afraid that we would attack him. He knew we wouldn't. He knew we were scared to death. We were like four rabbits locked up with a snake. Nice night, right guys? Still, with his huge grin, he walked over to the spot on the floor and with his big, long finger, touched it and put it in his mouth. Mmm, raspberry jam. Isn't it delicious? Isn't it blood? (laughs) What an imagination you have, little ones. That's not blood. At that moment, I could swear that his eyes got much bigger. They became more red, sadistic, and full of perversion. I would never dirty my workstation with blood. We all fell silent, paralyzed with fear. Every second that passed, the man treated us better and better. The smile grew bigger, distorted, and terrifying. I felt that if I looked at it too long, my heart would stop, but I couldn't stop. It was as if something in their smile and their eyes compelled us to see it. This person had a really terrifying aura about them. We knew he was a normal person, but we still felt he was a monster. What's up, kids? Cat got your tongues? (laughs) Hey, I have an excellent idea. If you wanted ice cream so badly that you came here to get it, why don't you try my new recipe? When I saw you on the cameras, I knew you were dying to try some delicious ice cream, so I brought you four of them. Sir, can we go? We promise we won't come back. Oh, no, 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 of course you can go, but you can come back whenever you want. Anyway, I won't let you leave until you eat your desserts. We all opened the ice cream. It was still cold. It had not melted yet. The taste was repulsive, but I couldn't identify what it was. You must be wondering about the recipe, right? This is made from my own skin, my own blood, and the garbage under my fingernails. Also from my fingernails. Hearing this, we all started spitting out the ice cream. With the same characteristic smile, the man approached Martin and spoke in his ear. Although we could all hear him, Little Martin, this is the second time you don't like my ice cream. I must admit, I'm very disappointed. This ice cream was especially for you, you know. It was made from your sister. Martin's face transformed. It was as if he had no expressions, just pure shock. I hope you guys don't tell anyone about this, because if you do, the rest of your families will end up here, and we don't want that to happen, do we? Right, Martin? Yes. Great. Go on, boys. Have a great night. We all went home terrified, without saying a word to each other, and never spoke of it again. A short time later, Martin's sister turned up alive. Apparently, her aunt had a nervous breakdown and had taken her away. The man had lied. Maybe he had also lied about the ingredients in the ice cream that he made us eat. But after what we lived through, none of us wanted to check it out. Today, we are all still friends, and we still remember that mysterious maniac who, a few weeks later, moved away, saying goodbye to all the children with a huge smile. As for me, I never ate ice cream again. Every time I see them, not only do I remember the taste of that man's ice cream, but I also remember the fear, the terror, and all the horrible feelings I felt that day. And worst of all, I remember that that man is still out there, and maybe he is still seeing children, giving them ice cream with that huge smile. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If so, please leave a like. And also, a small percentage of people that watch my videos are actually subscribed. 
If you want to support this channel and make this channel reach the 1 million mark, please consider subscribing. It's free and you can change your mind later. Enjoy. It was Saturday afternoon. I was selling ice cream by the park when an expensive car stopped next to my truck. A man dressed in a blue suit got down from the car and approached me. His huge, shiny Rolex watch didn't go unnoticed by me. He gave me a slick smile and said, Do you take bookings? I didn't, so I said no. He thought something while looking at the sky and then gave me his card from his leather wallet, which also looked expensive. My son Muriel is getting six tomorrow. He wanted to have an ice cream truck for his birthday party. I'll pay you $500. I needed the money badly, so I accepted the gig right away. He turned around to go back, but suddenly stopped and said, The party starts at six in the evening. Hope you have no problem working late at night. No, not at all. I'll be there. The man drove off in his car. I looked at the business card and saw the man as a doctor. His name was written... Dr. Joseph Heiter. The next day, I reloaded the truck freezer with as many flavors as possible. I put on a fresh shirt and a clean apron. Around 6.30, I reached the location. It was a big, luxurious villa that reeked of money from every inch. The huge iron gates opened automatically once my truck stopped near it. I entered the front lawn and heard birthday music coming from the back of the house. I drove the truck around to the back and stopped at the side of the huge yard. The place was decorated with balloons, lights, colorful chains, and all that you would expect from a lavish lifestyle. There was a huge bouncy castle set up in the middle of the yard, and a little boy was bouncing crazily as if his life depended on it. That's it. Yes, that's it. There were no other kids, which we generally expect at a birthday party. The boy suddenly noticed the truck and screamed. Ice cream! Yes! Dad, the ice cream man is here! At this time, I was so shocked to see no guests at this lavish birthday party that I overlooked Dr. Hyder sitting on the back porch, rocking on a chair and watching me. Once our eyes met, he smiled and came to me. The kid rushed to my truck, and honestly, I have never seen such a creepy kid in my entire life. His braces reminded me of Darla from the moving Finding Nemo. He slammed his hand on the counter, yelling, I want all the flavors in a big jumbo bowl. I want the biggest ice cream. I want it. I want it. Calm down, Muriel. He'll get you as much ice cream as you want. I wanted to ask where the other kids were, but too much curiosity kills the cat, so I kept shut. I took this big bowl and poured every scoop of the flavors I brought. Muriel watched me with a creepy face. The kid was jumping and fidgeting. He seemed overly spoiled and rude at the same time. Here you go, Muriel. I handed him the big bowl and he snatched it from my hands. Before heading back to his jumping house, he looked at me with an angry face and said, Won't you wish the birthday boy? Wish me, wish me. Yes, of course. Sorry, Muriel. A very happy birthday to you. May all your wishes come true. They always do. <laughs> he went back to the ride just like he came. Dr. Hyder realized my confusion. Muriel's my only son, and he's a special boy. He has a problem with sharing, so he likes spending his birthday alone. It's better that way. I see. Whatever makes a kid happy. Honey, please come out! Mr. Hyder called out, and I saw a woman dressed up in a white wedding dress coming out of the house. My eyes slowly shifted from her dress to her face, and the hair at the back of my neck stood up. She had a bloated face, almost like a frog, a forever smile stuck on her face. Her eyes were bulging out like they would drop down from her sockets at any moment. She stood beside Dr. Hyder like a puppet on his strings. Meet my wife, Sherilyn. She nodded her head up and down while her smile remained intact. Hello, ma'am. Congratulations on your wedding. Dr. Hyder let out a creepy chuckle and said, oh, It's been eight years since we are married. She's just wearing this for Muriel. Our son loves seeing her beautiful mother in her wedding dress. Love you, hon. Saying this, he kissed his wife on the cheek, and I saw her tremble once his lips touched her face. It seemed to me the kiss caused her pain. Her face didn't look normal at all. It was as if she was holding tons of cotton balls inside of her mouth 
yet there was no sign of scar or bruises from the outside, so I couldn't tell what exactly was wrong with her. Her eyes felt like she needed help. I could see them turning teary. Um, ma'am, would you like some ice cream? I asked out of general courtesy. No, no, she's on a special diet. It's time to cut the cake, Muriel. I'm getting the cake now. The kid jumped up and down in sick joy while shoving ice cream in his mouth. As soon as Dr. Hyder went in, the woman suddenly grabbed my hand and tried talking. What? What is it? Are you alright? But she wasn't able to say a single word. She tried opening her mouth and soon started choking on something. There was something stuck in her mouth. I couldn't tell what. Her eyes rolled up like she was about to vomit at any minute now. Oh my god! What's happening to you? Her grasp on my hand tightened. Something was about to come out of her mouth. What happened next will forever be printed in my memory. She made a puking sound, and a chain of tongues all stitched up like a big garland came out of her mouth. I have never seen anything that horrible in my entire life. Five to six human tongues were sewn in the form of an articulate surgery with her tongue. In a distorted, almost inaudible voice, she begged. Ah! I jumped into the driver's seat and started the engine. Dad, Dad, the ice cream man is running away! I heard that evil child scream. I couldn't stay back anymore. I wanted to help the poor woman, but I neither had the time nor anything to defend myself with against the psycho doctor and his deranged son. I drove like crazy. The iron gate detected the sensor and thank God it opened before Dr. Hyder could take any action. I heard the kids laughter and clapping. She's doing the tongue trick again! She's doing the tongue trick again! As soon as I got past the gates, I heard running footsteps. In the rearview mirror, I saw Dr. Hyder chasing my truck with a hunting rifle. He fired a shot that broke my side window but failed to hit me. I have never driven faster in my life. The gates closed behind me. I can't explain how I got home that night. I called the cops and gave them the address of Dr. Hyder. The aftermath of this incident is even scarier than the incident itself. The cops went to the address, met Dr. Hyder, and his family called me back for filing a false report on him. Can you believe this? The cops said the eminent surgeon was living happily with his son and his wife. They even sent me a picture of the family to confirm his wife's identity. The woman in that picture wasn't the woman I saw at the birthday party. The cops said they even searched his house but found nothing suspicious. Dr. Hyder was chucked out clean. Still today, I have found no news, no missing person report on that woman whose tongue was sewn with many other human tongues. I have no idea if she's alive or dead. Dr. Hyder is a mad doctor probably running horrific human experiments in his house without anyone's knowledge. It scares me to sleep when I try to think about what happened with those people whose tongues he cut off to give that unknown woman a bizarre makeover. I have to admit that being the ice cream man was the most rewarding job I've ever had. I admit the pay wasn't the best, but the job wasn't hard. All I had to do was serve ice cream, and in return, everyone loved me. Normally this would be a good thing, until you realize that maybe being loved by the wrong person can be the worst thing that ever happens to you. It all started on a normal day. A day I woke up thinking that nothing strange would happen, just reloading the merchandise, going around my neighborhood, and selling ice cream. Everything started exactly like that, until I met a very unusual customer. A blonde, very tall, and overweight man approached the ice cream truck. I, I want 10 lemon ice creams. N no, make it 15. Oh, hello, sir. Let me see if I have any left. As I was checking and picking them up, I felt the man looking in my direction. It was strange. I had my back to him, but I could still feel his eyes on my back. I felt a shiver with every second I grabbed the ice cream. Why was this happening to me? Why did I feel this way? It's your lucky day, sir. Normally I bring less of these, but it looks like the distributor gave me too much. With a huge smile, his eyes totally lit up with happiness. The man took all the ice cream and gave me his money. Thank you very much. You're such a generous man. My family and I love ice cream. 
Oh, they're for your family. <laughs> it makes sense. I didn't think you would eat all of these ice creams. Yeah, my family is very sad, you know, but ice cream makes them happy. I just want them to be happy. That's very noble of you, sir. I hope you enjoy them. As I was leaving, I must admit I felt a little guilty for judging this man. Yes, his appearance was odd, and the way he spoke was even worse, but he meant well and seemed honestly a good person. I felt a little ridiculous for being uncomfortable around him and just went on my way as he happily walked away with his ice cream. From that day on, I started seeing the man's face a lot more often. Every week he was waiting for me at the same spot, always anxious to order 15 or 20 of the same brand and flavor of ice cream. I could never anticipate what he wanted. Sometimes he would ask for chocolate, sometimes he would ask for frozen chocolates, and sometimes for strawberry or lemon ice cream. The only thing that always remained the same was his smile, that strange smile that, although it terrified me at first, now became a commonplace. On the other hand, not everything was good. Since this man was asking me for so many of the same kinds of ice cream, then I had no ice cream left for the rest of my rounds, and that made the kids pretty sad. Hell, imagine being a kid and waiting all week to eat your favorite ice cream and not getting it because some guy took 20 of those ice creams a few minutes earlier. I knew this could hurt my relationship with my best customer, but I was feeling pretty guilty, so the next time he asked for ice cream, I lied to him. I want 18 chocolate-filled ice creams. I'm sorry, sir, we're a little short of production this time. I, I can offer you up to three ice creams of the same type. I, I can also recommend you the chocolate ones, or these ones filled with... No! I want the chocolate ones! In just a second, his smile vanished. His shout made me think he was angry, but he seemed more puzzled as if my answer had thrown him off. Sir, I'm sorry, but I don't have that much ice cream. But you really should give the rest a chance. Your family will surely like to try more variety. Liar! My family will be mad. They want the chocolate-filled ice creams. Otherwise, they'll all be angry with me and won't talk to me. I'm sorry, sir. There's nothing I can do. As he didn't answer me, I tried to close the door of the van to leave. But before I could react, the man jumped desperately towards it, getting inside. What do you think you're doing? Get out of my truck, now! Sir, you don't understand. I need those ice creams. <laughs> I need them now. My whole family, my whole family will hate me. They still won't talk to me. And I'm very close to making them talk to me again. This man was totally crazy. His gaze was lost and he was frantic. It was as if inside this adult man lived a child and a rabid monkey. At that moment, I was terrified, but I could not give in because it could cost me my life. Sir, I don't know what your problem is, but I'm one second away from calling the police. Get out of my truck. No! Liar! I know you have ice cream. Why are you lying to me? Why are you all lying to me? Furious, he began to choke me with one hand. I tried to defend myself, but his strength was enormous. With his other hand, the man opened the mini fridge next to him and extended his other hand into it. Liar! Here they are! You wanted them all for yourself, didn't you? You were gonna eat all my family's ice cream! The man took his hand off my neck, and I breathed as hard as I could, but the terror wasn't over yet. He was still on top of me, trapping me in his huge body. When I was still reacting and understanding what was happening, my peace was gone in just a second. The man had not stopped choking me to free me, but he wanted to use both hands on something else. With one hand, he was holding a popsicle stick, and with the other, he was ripping the popsicle off the stick. What the hell are you doing? Get off me! Without any response, my attacker began to shove the popsicle into my mouth. Not satisfied that I didn't swallow, his huge, filthy hands were shoved inside my mouth, down my throat. Between all the ice cream, I could feel his huge, greasy fingers running across my tongue. Without missing a beat, he grabbed another ice cream and repeated the process over and over again. I can't describe to you what I was feeling at that moment. I was gagging, and at the same time, I wanted to throw up, but because of all the ice cream I had in my mouth, I couldn't. To make it even worse, have you ever eaten ice cream too fast and your head started to hurt? 
Imagine what I was feeling at that moment as whole scoops of ice cream ran down my throat in just seconds. The man was insane, totally blinded. It was as if he didn't even know what he was doing, just shoving more and more ice cream into my mouth without even looking at me as his gaze was totally lost and he didn't even look angry. Just when I thought all was lost, my salvation came through the back door. Some children saw what was happening and called their parents, who came to my rescue. They quickly pulled the man away, and while the others asked me if I was okay, I fainted. The next thing I knew, I was in the hospital. A nurse met me with a doctor, who told me they had saved my life by a miracle. I almost choked on my own vomit, and if the doctors in the ambulance did not treat me quickly, I would not have been able to make it to the hospital. Soon after, a policeman came in to ask me to testify about what happened that day. My attacker was not the kind of family person I thought he was, but a killer. His whole family was dead in his house. Their decomposing corpses were littered with melted ice cream. The man was not aware that they were dead. He thought they were just ignoring him, and that by bringing them ice cream, they were going to talk to him. From that day on, I am no longer the ice cream man. I gave the truck to one of my sons who needed to work, and now he is in charge of bringing joy to the children. Every day he leaves, I fear he may not come back. I know this may sound ridiculous, but as crazy as our world is, even being the ice cream man is not safe out there.